Greetings and welcome to Tailspire. My name is Aaron and you have found the Nordic Forge Games channel. Today I'm going to be talking about five Tailspire tips for beginners. Stuff that I wish I knew when I first started out. So first things first, let's go ahead and click begin and we will go ahead and get a new board loaded up. So here we are. Uh, first thing, you can click spacebar uh, and pull up your menus. And if you are new to Tailspire, uh, like myself, there is a really cool tutorial section over here on the left hand side. And I highly recommend checking out these tutorials. They're really well done and you can learn a lot from them. But the things we're going to be talking about today are extra things that the game doesn't really hold your hand with or tell you right away. So just keep in mind, this isn't a basic tutorial on how to use Tailspire, you know, basic movements and such. These are just tips that um, if you're already familiar with Tailspire, how to get better. And I'm hoping this will be the first video in a series of videos on how to improve your building, how to build some really cool stuff, how to use the tool more effectively and quicker. And if you are new to Tailspire and you're completely just starting out, I will post some links to some really awesome basic tutorials in the description of the video that you guys can check out. All right, so here we are. And to get into build mode, you know, it's just B. That's going to remove the dice from the bottom of the screen and let us access all of our cool build stuff. You can resize and move around your UI here just to give yourself a little bit more a bigger view of what you're working on. And that brings me to tip number one, which is start small. I cannot tell you how many times I booted up Tailspire. I was super excited to build something. I had an idea what I wanted to build. I saw something cool on the internet that I wanted to try to recreate and I just couldn't do it. And I was like, I don't understand how these other people that have just as much experience as me with the program are building things so much cooler than what I'm building. <laughs> Everything I build sucks. <laughs> and I think one, that's normal when you're first starting out in Tailspire. There is some like growing pains and a learning curve. But tip number one, starting small is the best advice I can give you. And when I say start small, I mean as small as you can, really. So this is your standard eight by eight tile here. Uh, the grassland tile. It's not a massive area to work with, but this is where your building needs to start. Your setting, essentially. So starting with an 8x8 tile is really fun because it's quick and easy. You can plop it down and you go, okay, what do I want to build on this 8x8 tile? You could build a small house. You could build a camp in the wilderness. You could build the beginning of a larger structure like a castle. Maybe you just want to build the entryway or a part of the entryway. This allows you to work with a smaller surface area. You could focus what you want to do and what you want to accomplish by using limited size, limited assets, not feeling like you need to put everything on this 8x8 tile, but also make it busy and interesting and have a lot of environmental storytelling. You want to fill the space when you start small. So how do we fill this space? And it's much easier to fill this space than trying to fill something that's 10 times as big. So if we wanted to do a road, right? We're planning an encounter for our Saturday night game with our buddies and we need a, a pathway that weaves through the forest. You can have an encounter on an eight by eight tile. You can have a role playing session on an eight by eight tile. You can have a small battle, you know, there are a lot of options for you, but let's say you wanted a roadway. You're like, okay, what do I want to put here? Maybe I put a road like kind of curving through here. You grab your road tiles and start messing around and seeing what you can create. So I'm going to lay down just a few tiles to give us a, a fun idea of what maybe we're wanting to build. And a lot of times what you create first isn't what you end up with. So keep that in mind too, is the first thing you create may not be the best thing you end up creating in that session. You, know, you may want to scrap stuff. You may want to start over. So I'm just trying to find some different interesting tiles here and vary them. So there we go. It's very flat and boring, but we've got our basic roadway. And you know what, if we wanted to continue it, it would be very easy to put down another eight by eight tile and we're still starting small. We've built this and now we're like, you know what, we want a little more space or maybe we want a clearing over here. So it would be really easy, grab another tile. Before you make a big, you know, 
200 by 200 tile. Maybe you just want to do a 16 by 16 board. So you can lay down these other tiles as you expand slowly and not worry about, oh, I've got to fill up 200 tiles worth right away. No, don't stress about it. Start small. So that brings us to tip number two, which is learn the shortcuts. Now, this is easier said than done, right? Because you t your tip is just to go learn something. That's pretty, that's pretty sucky. Yeah, no, I'm not telling you to go learn something because a lot of these things are not in the tutorials for the game. They're not in here. I mean, there's a few things like how to rotate an object or how to move it up and down or how to move it side to side. But there are some shortcuts that will make things tremendously easier. So learning the shortcuts are going to make things quicker for you, easier for you. And it's also going to make things more relaxing, which is pretty cool because Tailspire is such like a, it's a vibe of a game. It's like you're just chilling, you're building stuff. It's like therapeutic almost, especially when you're enjoying the process. And if you don't have to worry about going in the library and searching for the tile you want and forgetting where it is and, oh, where do I go get it? And how do I put it to where I need? No, no. You want to have a good time. You want to be able to chill and vibe. All right, so I'm going to show you a few of the shortcuts that I use every single time I build that have made building funner and easier for me. So number one is the control key. And you'll hear people refer to this as the clipping key. So it's control, right? So <clears throat> let's lay down an object. Let's uh, this big rock here, which by the way, I'm pulling the rock off of my favorites bar down here. I'm going to show you guys how to use this bar because that's another thing that was not explained to me. <laughs> or in the tutorials and this bar is really awesome because it's nice clean out of the way and you can put all your favorite stuff on it that you want to use so we have a rock here it is and we can move it around the area with no shortcuts and it just kind of snaps wherever which is fine but a lot of times you want to push it down in the ground or you want to hide it behind something or you want to turn it around and make it look exactly how you want it to look the best way to do that is the control key. So when you tap control one time, you don't hold it down, you just tap it, you're gonna enter into clipping mode. And as you can see, it's not moving up and down anymore. And the dotted line, the dotted grid that it's moving on is the height it's at. So the height is completely set and it will not change until you place it or you right click on your mouse and get rid of the object. But when you hit control one time, it's gonna put you into this clipping mode but it also can control the height of the object. So not only are you clipping where you can push it through stuff. So for instance, if we had two rocks, here's a rock here and here's this rock. If you don't use clipping mode, see it's, it's, it's not wanting to go inside that rock. It's going to try to snap around it. It's not, it's going to want to be behind it or in front of it. It will not go through it. But once you hit control, now we can pass the rocks through each other. And we can rotate them and put them however we want them. And you can actually make some really awesome stuff with clipping. So just tapping control one time. Now, if you hold down control, it moves up and down. So I'm holding down the control button right now and moving my mouse up and down. It's changing the height. And I let go of control. It stays at that consistent height. So if I push it down to the ground and let go of control, it's underneath the board now. If I want to raise it up so it's just peeking out, let go of control again, it stays at a consistent height. All right, so I'm going to drop it in the middle of the road there. So we've blocked our road. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I don't have anything selected right now. I could pick up a rock, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to control Z and put that back where it was. Let's say you have an object on the map and you don't want to pick it up. You just want to change its height. Well, the control key can be used for that too. Before I click the object, I'm going to hold control and you'll see a little arrow come up next to my hand. You see that? And that's letting you know, okay, now you can change the height of the object before you even click it with your mouse. So I'm holding down control and now I'm going to click it and move it down with my mouse. And it's not going to move directionally across the same plane. It's only going to move up and down. And then you can let go. And so you can basically smush things down into the ground without moving them at all. It will not move left or right. It will only move up and down. 
And that's really handy if you have something tall like a tree on your map. And you're like, you know what? It's a little too tall, but I don't want to grab it and try to re-snap it. It's where I want it to be. I just want it to be lower. Hold down control first, then just kind of pull it down in the ground and let go. And it will stay in the exact same location without moving around. Control key is what I use the most when I'm adjusting things on my map and moving them around. And again, it's referred to as the clipping key because it allows you to clip objects through each other. Okay, so second shortcut that I use all the time. What is super important is double clicking. So you can double click to do a lot of things. You can double right click to refocus your camera. So let's say you were working over here on something. You know, we're working on a tree over here. We got a tree. And we're, we've really been focusing on it. We're moving up and down. We're checking it out. And now we're like, oh, I got to move back over here and work on these rocks. Sometimes when you zoom in, everything's going to be really blurry. And it's going to be like, why is it blurry? I don't understand. You know, something's wrong with my game. So you can see a little bit of blur back there. Double right click will refocus the camera so that you can see better on what you're working. And you can notice you can double right click anywhere. And it kind of snaps your camera there, but it also makes sure that your focus is exactly where you're working. So you'll see me double click if I'm maybe putting some foliage or something up on this rock. Double right clicking is going to allow you to stay focused while you're building. Now, double left click. And yeah, I get them confused from time to time. Double left click duplicates an object and it allows it to this object to stay completely still where it is, right? I don't want to move this rock. I like where it's at. Double left click creates a copy. Boom. I need another rock really fast. Let me just grab one of those. Put it over here. Oh, I need another tree real fast. I'm going to put a tree over here. Double click that tree. Double left click the tree. <laughs> Remember, double right click will just make you move over and focus on it. But double left click will create a new tree. And that combined with the control key, clipping objects into the ground, you know, using the top of that tree to create bushes and what have you. That's a really quick and effective way to move around. The other thing, too, is the middle mouse button is used to rotate the camera. But if you don't have a middle mouse button, oh, well, I know a lot of people just have a basic mouse or it's hard for you to hold down that middle mouse button for a long period of time. You can also use the Q and E keys to rotate pretty slowly. And it's nice and easy if you just need to snap to the other side of something you're working on. So Q and E, left and right. And then the WASD keys actually move your camera around too. So you don't have to drag using the different mouse buttons if you don't want to. And there's a lot of options. Which also related to shortcuts is key bindings. If you go to your settings and you click on this little magnifying glass at the top, these are all of your key bindings for Tailspire. And if there's something that you're not really comfortable with or isn't intuitive for you personally, they've already included some rebindable things. For example, rotating objects. I rebound that to one of the buttons on the side of my mouse instead of the middle mouse button itself. And I just find it more intuitive to be able to rotate my camera with the middle mouse button and then click the side of my mouse to rotate objects. So rebind the keys for what makes the most sense for you, and then make your shortcuts as easy as possible. Make them really simple. So for instance, the alternate key. You remember if we hold down control, we see the little up and down arrow. If we hold down alternate or whatever you want to rebind it as, that shows up that we can spin an object around. It's like a little circular arrow. And that allows us to keep an object in the center of where we've already placed it and then rotate it however we need to. Let's make these trees a little bit different. Yeah, let's hang it out that way. Boom. So the control key, the alt key, and both the double right click of the mouse and double left click of the mouse are four shortcuts that have been extremely helpful. All right, we're on to tip number three, using the favorites bar. I think that's what this is called, this favorites bar down here. It's uh, these little, when you first start your game up, you'll just have these little black, uh, beveled squares. And I just thought it was part of the UI, but you can actually drag items onto that bar. Your favorites bar can be accessed even when your library is closed and you're in build mode. 
So if your library is closed, you can still drag items off of your favorites bar and build with them. So you don't have to open the library to go look for things that you use all the time. So as you can see, these two spots are open. Those are where I had my uh, stairs I use all the time. And so if you're in your library, you can actually search for things. But say you, you want to add an item to your bar that you use all the time. Well, you can't drag it onto there, and it's not in the tutorial, and you're like, how how do I get it onto there? It's so weird. You have to hold the X key. So X, as in X-ray, and you can drag items to your bar. And then you can also press X to drag them off of your bar and just drop them. Get them off of there if you don't want them. But see, I'm going to drag those stairs I use, right? Boom. Got it. And then I use these stairs a lot, too. I'm going to drag those on with X. So the X key will allow you to outfit your favorites bar with all your personal stuff, all the stuff you like. But let's say it's an item I use all the time, like these rubble rocks here. I use these a lot when I'm building. I didn't have to open the library and go find it. It's just here. It's automatically available to me right when I need it. It's like, oh yeah, I use those rocks all the time. I would love for this bar to go all the way across because I have other assets that I love to use constantly. Like these rocks here, I'm just going to put some on the road, make some rubble. But being able to grab these right off of your favorites bar and use them is so freeing. Uh, and it's also less confusing because sometimes <laughs> I forget where things are. I'm like, is it in furniture or is it in miscellaneous interior? Oh, that's right. It's in miscellaneous interior, these, these bags I use. Okay. Cool. Well, if you wanted to save them, you just have to hold X and then boom, you could drag them. So that's all you have to do. Hold X and then you can make an outfit your own favorites bar. Okay, tip number four is set your ambience early. And what I mean by that is have a plan for what you're wanting to build, right? If you go into Telspire and you just start building stuff, that's fun. That's cool. Maybe you don't know what you want to make yet. So you start putting down some props, trying to figure out what you want to make, kind of like I did with this road. But now that I have a road... And I know that my battle for this encounter or this little slab or board is going to be a roadway through the wilderness. And maybe it's scary. Maybe it's fun and lighthearted. Maybe it's relaxing. There is atmosphere settings over here on the left. It's the little sun icon. If you click that, these are all the defaults for the board. Anytime you make a new board, this is what it's going to be set on. And it's fine. You know, it's fine. <laughs> but it's not kick ass. And if you set your ambience early, if you set your atmosphere settings early, when you're building, it's going to be more inspiring and fun. You know, you're going to have a better time. You're going to have more of a sense of where this place is as it exists in your world. It's really straightforward. You've got ambient sounds like forest or drippy dungeon. You have music. So there's a whole little music library of fun tunes. Maybe we want it later in the evening as our adventurers come down this road. You just drag it left and right. See, this is completely nighttime here. There's the moonlight. And then as we drag back up the other side, you'll see it start to become morning and day. Maybe it's early in the morning whenever our adventure is set out. You can also just kind of click in here and find the one that works for you. Just changing a small amount gave us these long shadows. It softened the look of everything and it made everything a little more warm. The other thing we can do is, is this second slider over here is the direction of the sun. So this will change how our shadows are. And you can see they just kind of spin around in a circle. Where do we want our shadows? We want our shadows lingering across the road a little bit. Maybe we want them up on this rock. And then post effect settings. These are really fun too because uh, if it's really cold where they are, you can use the frozen setting. Like maybe there's not snow on the ground, but it's really cold. You can add just a little bit of the frozen effect and it'll feel colder. Or maybe it's really hot. Or my personal favorite is Enchanted, which adds this kind of purple color. But if you just use a little bit of it, it makes your shadows warmer and it, it adds just kind of a little bit extra flavor to your board, along with setting your day cycle to make building more pleasurable and make it more fun and entertaining and inspirational. The audio is a big part of that, right? If you're wearing headphones while you're building, or if you're trying to get an idea of what you want for your setting, 
I'm going to turn it up a little bit so you guys can hear it. And these are endless. They're just looped. So we're building a walk through the forest during the day or during the morning. This makes sense. Set your ambient sounds and music early in your building process and just play around with them while you're building, just like you would move a tree. Go in here and move this stuff around and see what works best for you. You can really change the mood of your board by adding just a little bit of music. And then there's a mixer too. If you're like, I like the music, but I don't want it to be the forefront, turn the music down. It doesn't need to be super loud. The last big tip of the video is don't end flat. And you're like, what does that mean? <laughs> what I mean is when you start building, it's easy to start flat. And you probably should start flat unless you're building a very specific elevated map or something. Start flat, but don't end flat. When you think your board is finished, look around. Is there too much flat space on your board? It doesn't look natural if everything is on the exact same plane. Now, yeah, we have the rocks, right? That's definitely making things not flat in quotations. But all of our grass is on the exact same plane. And if we ask ourselves, it kind of looks funny. It looks a little bit odd, especially since we have some cool decor, you know, uh, and interesting things on the map. How can we make this not flat? And how can we go forward knowing that like, okay, we've ended, we've completed this section of our build. How do we move forward knowing this isn't flat anymore? <laughs> well, one thing is we've, we've built some elevation, right? Our players can climb up here. But let's make some lower areas and some higher areas on the map as well to add some variation. It's also called undulation whenever the ground moves up and down. Even in a flat field, if you walk across it, you'll notice that there are sections that dip down and rise up even in that flat field. And so to do that, it's really easy using our control key, our clipping key, to move things up and down on the map especially our grass tiles, which are the things that are mainly sitting on the exact same plane. Even our trees are kind of at different heights. But let's get this grass to different heights. So one thing you can do when you're sitting on a board like this is push blocks down. So I'm going to use the control key and I'm going to push it down half a step. So as you can see now, these tiles are separated by half a step of elevation. If you push it down another half step, you're at a full step. So from the side, you can see this is a full step down. It's actually clipping through our bottom board. But when we do things in half steps, one, it's not super extreme. We're going to take it slow, right? Start small. And the other thing is it makes it seem more natural. Like there is just a small dip here instead of an entire drop down. And what we can do is we can move around and we can move our road down a little bit. Maybe the road starts sloping off in this direction. Maybe behind this rock, the elevation is actually higher. And pushing things up and down using that clipping key will create some natural looking elevation. So let's bring this block up here. And what you want is you want to have an element of randomness to how you move blocks, but also think about the terrain. Think about where the rocks are and would the land slope up or down in that area. But sometimes just moving things up and down will kind of decide for you. Okay, that actually looks cool. I like that. And you have some space here. If you don't like how that opening looks, remember you can use your double click shortcut and you can put another block underneath there to fill that hole. And that just makes the edges of your board look a little nicer. You can make things more. <laughs> you can make things more not flat, if that makes any sense. Let's go grab some other tiles here in our nature section. So the, we've been using the 2x2 two two grass tiles and the 2x2 two two road tiles. So everything's 2x2. Two two. They also have this really great 1x1 one one tile right here. It's the same texture as our grass tiles, same side, but it's 1x1, one one, which means you can create some more varying undulation in your ground. And you can create some more interesting shapes for your players to look at. Just by doing the same idea, snapping it, up and down about half a step each time at different levels and maybe even certain areas using a full step up and we can create even more variety and that's where those shortcuts come in handy to be able to quickly 
and effectively change elevation of your board. And now if we go down here to sort of a player's perspective, you can see how much more interesting this board looks to a player and to yourself. Now the player starts out a little bit higher. They get to come down, weave through these rocks. Maybe the rock slide has fallen over the road. We have lower areas. So maybe we remove this block. Remember, maybe we have some enemies waiting in ambush behind this rock. The elevation assists in storytelling so much. And then the road starts sloping downward, maybe toward a village in the distance. On this 8x8 tile, all of a sudden, we have a lot of ability to create stories and for the players to create stories themselves. And you do that even further through adding more assets. And so, for instance, if you think an area looks like it's a little bit too sloped off or too high, you can add stairs. Or you can take, this is like a little mud tile, and you say, you know what, what if I clip that into the ground and make more of like a dirt slide here so it doesn't look like it's such like a hard angle like it was built in Minecraft. You can take and add more assets to make your board look and feel more natural. Even though it's all cubes and rectangles and hard angles, you can actually take these different assets and by using our shortcuts and clipping, make them look so much more real. And even from a bird's eye view now, if we're looking down at our board, we can spot the elevation changes. We can see that more assets have been added, making the details of the board more interesting and fun. And once I really started using all five of these tips I've talked about, my builds started looking how I wanted them to look. And they started to be more fun creating. I didn't stress as much. I didn't go, oh man, I hope I can make something cool this time. It was I know I can make something cool. <laughs> I want people to feel like they have the power to make something exactly how they want it, make it look awesome, have fun while they're making it, and be confident in doing so. If you want to make something awesome, you can. And this tool is fantastic for tabletop gaming, especially in today's world, right? And not only is it a creative outlet for you to be able to build actual worlds, it's a social outlet for you to be able to bring your friends in and show them the stuff you've made. That's what brings me to my extra tip for this video, tip number six, which uh, was not in the title, I know, but check out the stuff at Tales Tavern. Tales Tavern is a website where people host their creations and share their creations so that you can import them into your boards or your campaign for use in your games. The website is set up really nice. It's clean. It's easy to use. It's easy to understand. And it's a great place to find inspiration. It's a great place to go if you need an asset really quick or you need a slab really fast because you didn't do a whole lot of planning for your game. <laughs> go be inspired by what's on that website. Be inspired by these other creators. My goal for this channel has always been to provide resources, inspiration, education, and assets for people interested in role-playing games, tabletop community, gaming in general. So if that's something you're interested in, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or if you need help or need advice. I am more than willing and excited to go on this journey. So thanks for watching again, guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Keep being awesome. Keep building awesome stuff. And until we meet again, 